In 1899, Arthur Morgan confronts a client who owes him money. What's not to understand? <laughs> he costs on Arthur, which spirals into serious health issues. The client would eventually pass away, but what's interesting is that Arthur tells him, Then sell your wife. A statement that would become reality. You want some company, mister? No. You sure? To fully appreciate this story, we need to start from the beginning, when Arthur gets involved in a fight. <laughs> Tension increases when a tough guy named Tommy appears. And this is where things start to get exciting. Tommy is known as the strongest person in town. You want some too, huh? They engage in a brutal fistfight, and despite the odds favoring Tommy, Arthur emerges victorious. But a stranger breaks up the fight. Please, I beg you, stop. You won the fight already, surely that's enough. His name is Thomas Downs. Mr. Downs is in deep financial trouble, having taken a loan from Mr. Strauss, one of the other members in the Vandalin gang. Ah, how did you get on? Not so good. Unable to meet the repayment terms, Arthur Morgan is sent on a mission to track him down, ensuring the debt is settled one way or another. Mr. Thomas Downs? You owe me money. We ain't a charity, Mr. Downs. During the confrontation, Downs appears weak and frail compared to their first encounter. We ain't your idea of charity! Is that clear? <laughs> In a disturbing twist, Thomas's cough sends blood flying, some even landing in Arthur's mouth. <laughs> A moment that foreshadows the grim path ahead. Not good news. I guess that. His wife, Edith Downs, Thomas! Rushes in, breaking the tense scene. She shouts out that, I said what you looking at, woman? My husband isn't well. But Arthur, unmoved, demands the money as he walks away. Like I said, we ain't nobody's idea of charity. Get us the money. This marks the final glimpse of Thomas in the game's narrative, carrying massive implications that will unfold in the story, and Arthur regretting his choice of actions for the remainder of his life. Herr Strauss? That man. The debtor? Thomas Downs? Apparently he's dead. Dead? When informed about Thomas's demise, Arthur recalls... Huh, well, hey, he didn't seem very well. He is instructed to... I believe he has a wife and child. She will assume the debt, of course. Of course. Then you can head up there and collect. We lent them a lot of money. Okay. Teaming up with Bill and Lenny, they venture into Valentine with the aim of robbing the bank. Let's go rob ourselves a bank! The staff are caught off guard by Karen's distraction. You're the only one. And are helpless as the gang storm in. Word up. Nobody move! Don't make us hurt you! The bank teller can't remember the passcode. I... Uh, the, the, the manager does that. Uh, I... God damn it! Now what? So it's up to Arthur to crack the safe. It's a nail-biting moment as they retrieve the money and make an escape. Everybody stay calm. Somebody the bat. And look, look, over there! They eventually lose them. Thanks to a passing train, the team split in different directions, and Arthur heads straight to the Downs Ranch. Go on, get out of here. I have some other business to attend to. And he finds Edith and her son Archie packing their belongings into a wagon. Your husband knew the rules when he took that money. Now, I'm real sorry about the way things turned out. Ready to leave their ranch behind and embark for a fresh start elsewhere. Ah, oh, Mrs. Downs, thank you for your punctuality. It's next to godliness, isn't it? Mrs. Downs finds herself pushed to the brink and her world being turned upside down. When Arthur comes across Sister Calderon in Saint Denis, their meeting is interrupted as a child bandit steals this from her. No offense. None taken. None taken at all. Hey! Stop! These kids that are worse! Don't hurt him, please! Arthur gives chase and is determined to retrieve the stolen item. When he finally catches up to him, another man has caught him. Hey you! Why don't you leave the boy alone? Arthur commands him to release the boy, which he complies with. Alright, forget it. 
The boy thanks him and dashes off. This incident leads to a shocking revelation. Arthur spots a familiar face. <coughs> hey, you want some company, mister? No. You sure? Hey. What? I don't know you. This is Downs? Oh, no. Not you. Get away. Ha, now. I mean, I, hey, Help. Uh, Help! Hold on! This man is bothering me! Now. Someone help me! Officer, help! Edith Downs calls out to the police for assistance, resulting in a sudden and chaotic escape for Arthur. Despite this frenzy, he manages to return the stolen cross to Sister Calderon. Sister, I got your cross. <gasps> you didn't! She is overcome with joy and labels Arthur... You are the most wonderful man! A compliment that Arthur brushes off. I'm happy to help a little. As the chapters in Saint Denis and Guama unfold, an alarming change in Arthur's physical condition becomes increasingly noticeable, and his bouts of coughing more frequent. <coughs> this is a tough time. And you ain't you ain't doing too well. Signaling a decline in health. At the same time, Edith and her son Archie seize the opportunity to escape Saint Denis relocating to the small mining town of Ansburg. We find this out when this happens. Mrs. Dalf? Oh no. You leave me alone. You just leave me alone! Arthur unexpectedly comes face to face with Edith once again, when she is accompanied by a client. The narrative quickly takes a dark turn, confirming something that spells doom. Arthur's persistent coughing intensifies, resulting in him passing out. <coughs> when he is awakened by a stranger, he is rushed into the doctor's office. Can I help you? I need a doctor. An examination is carried out and the bad news is delivered. It's not good news. Well, I guess that. You got tuberculosis. I'm really sorry for you, son. It's a hell of a thing. The tough news forces Arthur to face a hard reality. He's slowly dying from tuberculosis and there is no cure available. The harsh truth makes him think deeply about his life and decides that it's time to make things right. He travels back to Annisburg and once again encounters Edith, who is trying to attract potential clients. You want company, boys? Understandably, Arthur apologizes for all the pain he has caused her. Well, well, you're sorry. Yeah, I heard you. He asks about her son. Who's your son, Mrs. Down? Oh, where you think? And she informs him. Down the mine until he gets sick, which won't be long given how hard they work him. He offers a solution, eager to help because of the harm he caused her family. But she doesn't want to listen to anything he has to say. Maybe I could go. Well, maybe you could just leave us all alone. He takes matters into his own hands and travels up to the mine entrance where he confronts the bullies. Who's this, your daddy? My daddy died. And this man, he killed him. What are you doing here? Leave the boy alone. Why'd you kill his daddy? You after his mama? Leave the boy alone. Or what? Or I'll kill you too. He delivers a punch so forceful that it sends everyone scrambling. You can't even fight your own battle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's next? Let the boy go. Let him go. <laughs> Come on, me. Shame on you. He's just a goddamn boy! He gives money to Archie, advising him to go back to his mother and leave the area for good. Oh, try and talk to your mama and get out of here. Now run. I'll try. Good boy. I don't want to see you here again. When we go back to their house later on... You still here, kid? Yes. Archie reveals that his mother declined the money because it came from Arthur. She said your money weren't moral. She said it'd be better to die than to take it. <laughs> Choosing to continue her work instead. She's still heading out. Working, you know? With remorse in his words, he apologizes for the difficult situation that he placed them in. I'm sorry, son. <laughs> Sorry about all of this. She ain't been back for a few hours. He sets off to track Edith, learning that she went towards Willard's Rest. She left with some fellow down the railway tracks. I did not like the look of him. With a man who seemed very dangerous. Around the woods, towards uh, Willard's Rest. He rushes to the location, and after searching, finally finds them. 
nice out. That's enough now, partner. Oh. You're starting to scare me, let alone the poor woman. Clear off. Who are you? Someone who don't want to hear no more of your nasty mouth. It's clear she's visibly shaken and uncomfortable by his behavior. Arthur confronts the man and warns him to never bother her again. Sit clear off before I deal with you. The potential client, recognizing the serious tone, reluctantly complies, but not without a final, unsettling gesture. I'll see you again, dearie. She immediately notices the signs of tuberculosis in Arthur. <coughs> Excuse me. You sound like my husband. He acknowledges the mistakes he made in the past and is suffering the consequences for them now. I'm sorry for what happened, and I'm suffering for my foolishness. She breaks down in tears, overwhelmed by a stark contrast between her past life and current reality. I'm just so ashamed. Returning to Archie, she rushes to embrace her son. Mama! Mama! In the midst of their reunion, they face the uncertainty of their future. Go. Live someplace else. Start over. It's during this moment that Arthur says with urgency, I ain't looking for forgiveness. It ain't about that. But don't forgive me. Just take the money and get out of here. Please. I know I ruined your life. I suffer for it every day. But don't let yourself get killed for, for pride. I've seen it kill too many folk. He offers them money, and Edith, understanding the sincerity behind Arthur's gesture, reluctantly accepts. That's... All I got is Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I said don't thank me. As they head back into their accommodation, the door behind them closes, symbolizing their departure from the harsh chapter of their lives. But their story doesn't end here. We're left with a clue as to what exactly happens to them. A small newspaper article can be found with the headline reading, A Gentleman's Sport. But a familiar name pops out. Edith has developed and opened several successful businesses with her son. Furthermore, we get a short glimpse of them during the credits. Their fancy clothes implying that they are much wealthier than before. Edith lost her husband and was forced to make ends meet by any means necessary. She overcame all the odds and turned out to be the biggest success story in the game.